Hello, this is Mark Tucker, and welcome to Action Hero JS Getting Started. Action Hero allows you to build APIs, RESTful or otherwise, using Node and then access those APIs via HTTP, TCP, and WebSockets. Action Hero includes actions, background tasks, routes, a file server, and built in support for Redis and Fay. You can find it on the web at actionherojs.com. These um, samples that we're going to go over assume that you already have Node.js and NPM installed, and I also have Git. So let's look at the Action Hero JS site. It says it's a reusable, scalable, and quick Node.js API server. It goes through some of the different features. So the URL that we're going to um, expose for our API is going to map to actions. You can also have background tasks that uh, wake up on um, a certain basis to go ahead and check things or, or execute some actions or single running, um, support for Redis and Fay, um, API first development, routing. So if we scroll down here to the bottom, it tells us how to get started. So I'm here in my node dev directory and I'm going to make a directory my hero. Let's go ahead and um, go to that directory and I'm going to execute node package manager install um, for action hero alright so what we see here is now it just gave us a node modules directory and what we want to do is uh, create a structure um, kind of a default action hero project so we access that through node modules bin action hero we'll go ahead and generate now we have our project structure and let's go ahead and start um, action hero up and that go ahead and that kicks off our server. Now we'll take a look at exactly what this uh, basic startup project gives us. But if we were to go to um, localhost 8080, we could see that there is something listening there, and it tells me uh, Action Hero API and a version, and it gives me some different information. It also says that there is a status. Um, API call that doesn't require or have any optional inputs but it's going to return back an output that's going to include um, stats so let's go ahead and take a look at that let's go to API status and there we're executed that API call so there's an action called status and we've got it exposed off of this API endpoint um, there's also a public endpoint which is going to be our file server so now we have um, ability to have API calls and file server calls so let's go ahead and open up um, my hero in sublime text first thing we're going to look at is the config file so the config file if we notice that part that came back in the response this is some of the information that came back in the response and we have the ability to do logging. Um, so here is a log. And it says that fake Redis is running. Now, it's got built-in support for Redis. And so you can either turn on this fake Redis server or you can uh, put in the information to access um, a real instance. Um, here's support for Fay. Um, this is telling you that your server is going to start up at port 8080. So there's just a number of different uh, uh, pieces of information in here and it tells you that you have an endpoint for at API and that's where your API endpoint is going to go and that's going to map to actions or your files are going to be served up by public so in here you can see that uh, sorry, you've got this uh, file that was served up by public and here in your actions you have a status um, action and its name is status and that's why you can go here and go into the API and status. Oh, sorry about that. And we're going to go ahead and open up Postman and do the same thing in here. So 
Um, here I'm just doing a git call um, saying that I'm passing application JSON um, and here is the response back at 200 OK. So let's look at this a little bit more. Um, so what if we wanted to change our server, um, our API around a little bit and we wanted to actually require that name was passed in. So let's go back here and break our server, start it back up. So now when we go into Postman here, we can go ahead and send. And I'm getting the 200 OK back, but I'm getting this error saying that error the name is a required parameter. Now, um, we can also change, go over here to post and say I want to um, send a name. Um, let's go ahead and change that. And now it says it's 200 OK and I get back my response. Um, so let's go ahead and change this just a little bit. We're going to go into our configuration and we're going to come down here and turn on error codes. And I'm going to go ahead and restart our server. So now, uh, if I go ahead and send to status endpoint the name, then I get 200 OK. But if I don't send it anything, then I'm going to get a 422. And um, that's something that you can change. You can actually in your action specify what kind of uh, status code and error response is going to come back. Or if I pass in the wrong name, then it's going to also give me an error. So what happens is that when you go to the specific your API URL, then it's going to look up an action in this actions list based on this name and you'll want one action per um, URL path. And then it will look in here in both the required and optional names. And if it's anything that's not in those two lists will then be stripped out of the request. And then you'll be able to um, process. And down here in this run, it will take this uh, access to this connection and be able to then um, process it and add things onto the response of that connection and that's how things show up. Um, so like here we're having a response.stats and tasks and workers and we're adding um, tasks and we're adding workers and then at the end you're going to say next and connection is true and that's going to actually pass it off into the next um, place and uh, process any middleware if you need to. And in the end, it's going to come down here to, um, to, let's go ahead, node modules action hero. It's going to go down in here to servers, to this web server. And uh, here is the code for when an action is completed. It's going to call complete response, pass it in those parameters, and then Here's complete response. Um, if you've passed false, then it wouldn't show any of these uh, things in the response. So this is where the server information gets tagged on to the response and the requester information, as well as if you turned on error codes, here's your default error codes. That's where we got the 422 from. Um, but in your action, you could actually specify raw connection and a different response code other than 200, and it will use that response code. And down here, we stringify the whole response, and we go ahead and send a message off to uh, display that, and that's how we get it to the to back to the um, consumer of the API. So I think that's uh, at least a good introduction in how to get started with Action Hero and uh, some of the configuration and what to do with the status. So I hope you enjoyed it.